Hey, we have here today another integral from the UNSW integration B2021. This is problem number seven. We have the integral of sine x minus x over one minus cos x dx. Okay, I thought this was interesting. At first I was kind of thinking there was just a lot of steps and maybe this was gonna to be too tedious. And then I realized that what it really relies on is all these formulas over here on the right. One thing I thought of when doing this is we're not as comfortable with cosecant and cotangent as we are with secant and tangent. And sometimes we might forget these formulas over here on the right. So what I thought I'd do is to try to make this a little easier is just kind of have all the formulas ready, all the integrals that we're going to use in order to do this. And then hopefully that'll make it go a little smoother. So for my first step, what I'm going to do is we have a subtraction up here. So I'm going to break this up into two integrals. So we're going to break out our sine x like this, and then we'll have a separate integral for our x over one minus cos x. And this is where we can use our first formula over here. We can see that this sine x over one minus cos x here is actually cotangent. It's the half angle formula, cotangent x over two. And you'll notice that's just the reciprocal of tangent x over two. So we'll rewrite this piece as cotangent x over two dx. So we can integrate this using this formula. We'll just pull, because there's a two in the, in the denominator, we'll, we'll bring a two out front here, and we'll have natural log sine x over two. And now this, this integral over here looks actually pretty tricky because we don't have a way really to deal with having x and cosine x together. There's not really a good u substitution. In a case like this, what we can do is integration by parts and we can differentiate the x. So let's do integration by parts using the DI method. We'll have our tabular integration table and we'll differentiate x and we'll integrate one over one minus cos x. Then we'll differentiate x and we have one and we'll differentiate again and we'll have zero. Before I integrate this piece right here, what I'm gonna do is multiply a one plus cos x in the numerator and denominator in order to transform this thing. So that's gonna give us uh, one plus cos x over one minus cos squared x is just sine squared x. So then to integrate this thing, we're gonna, we'll break this up of one over sine squared x is cosecant squared x plus cosine over sine squared x is actually, can be written as cotangent x times cosecant x. But then we have integrals over, for, the, for both of these we have integrals over here. So our cosecant squared is gonna be minus cotangent x. And then for cotangent times cosecant, it's gonna be minus cosecant x. But then from here we have to integrate one more time. Okay, because we have this row here is gonna be an integral. So then I think you can see why I wrote down all these formulas is because you have to use them over and over again this, for this integral. So we're gonna have minus ln sine x minus the integral of cosecant x is gonna be natural log cosecant x minus cotangent x. And then from here, our last row, because we have the zero, this integral is gonna be zero, so we don't have to worry about it. So we just need our solution on the diagonals. So let's just write this down. We're gonna have minus x. I'm gonna take a minus out. We're gonna have minus x times cotangent x plus cosecant x. Then in here, we just distribute this minus to here. We'll distribute this minus to the natural logs and we'll have plus plus. So this is gonna be plus natural log sine x plus natural log cosecant. I'm out of space. Okay, from here, so I've just rewritten and taken our integration by part stuff and plugged in, but we had a minus sign in front of that integral. So I distributed the minus sign here, here, and here. So then what I'm gonna do next, let's take our sine. We have our formula over here for sine x over two, okay? If I take this two and bring it over here, I can square this using the property of logarithms. So if we square sine x over two, we're just gonna remove the radical and the, the sine doesn't matter because if we square the negative, we get a positive. So we're gonna have one half, one minus cosine x, but that's all inside natural log plus x cotangent x over two. And next what I'm gonna do is from these two natural log expressions, I'll factor out a negative and then what we can do is multiply what's inside together. So we can multiply sine x times cosecant x minus cotangent x. So we're gonna have sine x, but then when I rewrite this, I'm gonna rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines so we can get some cancellation. 
So our cosecant x is going to be 1 over sine x minus cotangent is cosecant x sine x. And then what that means is this sine is going to cancel here, here, and here. So we're just left with natural log of 1 minus cosine x. What that allows us to do is this minus sign, we can turn this into division with this natural log. So I'll write this as natural log half 1 minus cos x over here is just 1 minus cos x. But then, of course, this is going to cancel. We, could, we can just drop our absolute value now because we just have a half inside the natural log. And then we're going to have plus x cotangent x over 2 plus c. Then one final step here, we can take ln of a half is just a number, okay? So this can just be absorbed in the constant and ignored. So for our final answer, we're going to have x cotangent x over 2 plus c. And then from here, you do notice that this could actually be done by a reverse product rule because this can be split up like we did in the beginning. We split this into two integrals. If we take the derivative of this and use the product rule, the derivative of x is 1 times cotangent x over 2. Real quick, we can look at the derivative of this. So if we take the derivative, derivative using the product rule, derivative of x is 1 times cotangent x over 2. Now, cotangent, remember this right here, this right here is cotangent x over 2. And then for the second part, we can write this as plus x. The derivative of this is going to be minus 1 half from the chain rule cosecant squared x over 2. So then we can rewrite this a little bit. We'll have our cotangent x over 2. We'll write this as uh, minus x 1 half. We'll write cosecant squared as 1 over sine squared x over 2. But sine squared x over 2, okay, sine, sine x over 2 is this. So when we square that, we get half 1 minus cosine x. But these halves cancel. And then you'll notice, and again, we can plug back in our cotangent x over 2 as this. So we'll have sine x 1 minus cosine x minus x over 1 minus cosine x, which is our original integral. That's it, UNSW 2021. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.